Hey guys, welcome to the first installment of Inferno Friday. This is Archon speaking. Me and my brother, Dreadnought, will be making weekly videos sharing the best strategies we can find for melting faces in the Inferno difficulty of Diablo 3. I'll be playing a wizard and will be sharing wizard strategies, while Dreadnought will be playing and covering barbarian strategies. We plan to cover all five classes in the future, but for now it will mainly be Wizard and Barbarian. Come May 15th, when Diablo 3 is released, we will be making gameplay videos demonstrating the most effective strategies we found each week. However, since the game is not out yet, this week we'll be sharing with you the five things you want to know before playing Diablo 3. These are the five things we found which we feel will help players level the fastest once the game is released. So to get things started, Dreadnought will be introducing the first one. Thanks Archon, this is Dreadnought, and we're going to start off with the infamous elective mode, which was unintentionally kept a secret from many of the open beta testers. When elective mode is activated in the preferences tab, players have the freedom to choose any combination of skills rather than just one skill from each category. Blizzard reps explain that the elective mode is off by default to prevent new players from being overwhelmed by the skill progression. If you're already comfortable with an action bar and skill selection, we recommend activating elective mode from the start for maximum customization. If you played Diablo 2, you probably remember that the best way to get gear and possibly experience was to do speedrun boss kills, typically Bale or Mephisto, which consisted of creating a new game, taking the closest waypoint, and killing the boss as quickly as possible. This was the best strategy because bosses dropped the best loot. That's not the case, however, in Diablo 3. Killing a boss for the first time on a given difficulty will give you increased loot. However, after that, boss loot will be similar to the loot off of elites, champions, and the random encounters found in each zone. And because they are all so much more plentiful than bosses, it will probably make more sense to clear much of the area instead of rushing straight to the end boss. Now, early in the game, you might not care as much about loot, and completing quests as quick as possible might be the fastest way to level. However, if you're at the point where you need more experience or better gear to progress to the next act, killing elites and champions and completing random encounters will definitely be the way to go. Gamers who have played MMOs like the World of Warcraft are already familiar with the profession system. In many online games, professions are time consuming and barely worth the resources put into them. This won't be the case however in Diablo 3. It will be worth your time and resources to level your blacksmith and jeweler. The weapons and armor that you craft will give you significant gear upgrades throughout your journey to Inferno, and any player who chooses not to level and use his blacksmith will be greatly crippled unless he plans to throw some money at the real money auction house. The jeweler was not available during the open beta, but leveling the jeweler is a must for any player racing to level 60. The gems you use to augment your gear will be worth the effort. Gems will be tiered with a similar system to Diablo 2, with Chipped Ruby being the lowest tier and a Radiant Star Ruby being the highest tier, giving a plus 31 experience gain bonus if placed in a helm slot. Yes, it will probably be a while before your rubies are this radiant, but you don't have to use much imagination to see how the jeweler can accelerate your path to Inferno. If you didn't get to try out the beta, I recommend familiarizing yourself with both the blacksmith and the jeweler at the battle.net link in the description of this video. If you played much of the beta, you may have noticed that playing with a group seems to be much more effective than solo questing, and there are a couple reasons for this. Despite the increased difficulty, the benefits you give to other members in your group allows you to move through quests faster than if you were to play by yourself. Also, you're still getting just as much experience per kill as you would playing solo. The real advantage, however, seems to be the ability to port back to town and then use the banners to port back to your friends. Once in town, there will be a banner for each player in the game. Right-clicking on a banner will instantly teleport you to that player's location, assuming they're not engaged in a boss fight. This allows one player to leave the group, sell, repair, and turn in quests, while the rest of the party continues to progress. Also, quest turn-ins seem to count for all players, which will save you even more time. On the other hand, having players in your game who aren't fighting with you could slow down your leveling time. You don't seem to get any extra experience from having more players in the game, however, the difficulty will still be increased, which will slow you down. 
It looks like the best strategy is to find friends to play with, from real life or in the game, and create private games to avoid other players joining who might not be fighting with you, but who will still increase the game's difficulty. Profession boosting is a rewarding strategy for anyone with a trusted Diablo 3 gamer buddy. I say that trust is involved because you will be giving your friend the materials necessary to level his blacksmith, and he will be giving you the materials you need to level your jeweler. So you will depend on your friends to craft blacksmithing gear for the both of you, and you will be crafting the gems for your two-man team. Starting at jeweler level 4 and blacksmith level 5, special crafting pages found throughout the world will be required to level your crafters, along with a decent amount of gold. Through profession boosting, your two-man team still has access to both a leveled jeweler and a leveled blacksmith at half the price. Beware though, if your friend decides to go back to competitive Mario Kart racing and leaves Diablo 3, you will be stuck with your level 1 blacksmith. Well, that's all the tips we have for you this week. Next week we'll be covering some theory crafting that's going on in the forums, and me and Dreadnought will each discuss the leveling strategies we plan on using once the game comes out. This video has been mirrored on each of our channels, however our gameplay videos will be a little different. We'll still be recording videos together, however you'll be able to watch my screen on my channel and Dreadnought's screen on his channel, so you can kind of decide which class you want to follow. We'll also include a link in the description of this video so you can subscribe to either of our channels. Thanks for watching guys. You can expect a new video every Friday, so please like and subscribe.